Hey everybody, it's Mallory from the Self Sewn Wardrobe podcast and live broadcast, and I'm at a funny camera angle today. I swear I do know how to uh, do live videos, but anyway, the reason I am is because I'm going to turn my camera around and I'm going to talk to you about sewing uh, bread bowls. So uh, what I've done, I've done a couple of lives about this, and I've done a bread bowl, a uh, bread proofing bowl, and I didn't bring it up here with me for some reason, but I've shown it, I've taken lots of pictures, I showed it in my last live broadcast. And so anyway, what you're gonna need huh, is some clothesline. Okay, mine has gone crazy after it's come out of the package. This is a quarter inch uh, cotton clothesline, okay, that we're gonna use as the base of our bowl and for um, for decorating it. Uh, we might, I'm gonna talk to you, I'm gonna give you some caveats about decorating your bowl. Um, and then I got my normal, you can see it's the J foot. It's just the all purpose foot that, uh, we will use to make the bread bowl. And then I, oh, I'm not even going to tell you what I was doing before this, um, quarantine lifestyle is making, you know, things a little odd. Uh, and then the other foot I have, which is once again for decorating, it is this double cording foot. I'm going to explain to you this double cording foot at first glance, looks like something that you might use to actually construct the bread bowl, but it's not actually a good tool. Um, and then I was, I was just telling ZD, she's over here working on some stuff. I was like, I'm really fast at this now at making these bowls. I'm, I say that I'm probably gonna like screw it up on, uh, on TV, but ZD used to, I said to her, she, Sorry. calm down. <laughs> I have <read> my <laughs> just give me one. Just give me one. Well, they're all different. Oh, okay. Okay. Here. Cause you know, I never make the same thing yes. twice. All right. Hold on. Hold, just hold them. Cause I can't, the camera angle's weird. Okay. ZD used to throw lots of pottery. And I told her that when I get going on these, it's like I'm throwing, or, I mean, it's not like you're throwing a bowl, but it kind of, you get into a rhythm. So anyway, this is some of ZD's original pottery. Here, there's, show me the other one. There's my, yeah, there's there's your, my, my yeah, stamp. Her stamp is right here. Okay. okay. That was it? Hillary's favorite. Is that it, way she called swan. it the swan plate. It's a swan. I think it's a swan. Oh, I like this. Hey, are you, you like using these? Well, I, now I'm going to that I thought about. Yeah, I want to use them. And there we go. Okay, so anyway, just thought I'd let you know. ZD's a, a cool person. I was going to say something else. All right, clothesline. So this is, uh, <clears throat> in this instructional process, I'm kind of going backwards. I have written the whole blog post about these bread bowls, but I don't have any video content yet. And either I need to take pictures or a video, like one or the other. It's not... It's not something that can just be described. There are lots of books about this, and I uh, will have links to those books, too, but get really in-depth. I mean, you're making pots with, like, lids and stuff. So without further ado, I think I'm going to turn my camera around, okay, and toward the machine bed and get started that way. All right. So machine – oh, you can see our open thread drawer there and more clothesline and, oh, and stuff. Me. No, can't see you. Okay. It's okay. ZD doesn't ever make up on. Okay, so here's the end of my clothesline, all right? And what I'm going to do to get started – well, first of all, I'm going to put the foot on my machine. Ta-da. Okay, um, and so anyway, now to get started with this, one thing that's so important in this process – oh, and I – I have it so where my knee lift uh, is between the legs of my tripod. How cool. So what you want to do is you do not want ever for your foot to be uneven. Okay, I'm trying to show you like worst case scenario. Okay, look. See how that there's a slant to my foot? We want to avoid that at all costs, especially at this time when perhaps your sewing machine repair store is unavailable to you. Okay, so I would really recommend not doing that. So what I'm going to do here, um, I'm going to do this on camera. I might have to do a little off camera because it's at a funny angle. But I'm going to spiral this clothesline around a little bit to make myself just a bit of a platform, okay, for my foot so that I just, I have a base to start with. This is flat. It's not, you know, we're not, we're not turning it into a bowl yet, okay? We're not, we're not there. 
All right, so this is flat, and now I'm just gonna put it under my foot, and I just wanna show you. Uh, I'm raising my foot, you can see I'm not using my other hand, because I'm raising my foot using my knee lift, and if you don't know what that is, uh, well, we'll I'll tell you later, and you're gonna want one so bad. And so I'm gonna do a zigzag, and right now, um, I'm gonna increase the width to about 4.5, and I'm going to increase my length uh, to about a two. And so what I have, nothing is sewn here right now. It's just, you know, been, uh, what do I want to say? You know, coiled up. And so now I'm just going to sew forward on this. And then I'm going to, I'm pressing my reverse button and I'm going to sew backwards. Why is this so slow? <laughs> Did you uh, get the governor? There we go. Now, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's just, it's funny sewing at this angle. Okay, and so I'm gonna go forward again, and I'm gonna go backward again. And I'm gonna, oh, and see how I let the back of my foot fall off of there? Really not, d d try not to do that. Keep it on. Okay, and then go back to your center of your little uh, spiral there, and pivot your machine. I've got my needle down, and I raised my presser foot, and now I'm gonna go perpendicular to that line, okay? So I'm just making like a little cross to start off with, this is not the most beautimous way to start off this process, okay? So it's it's a very utilitarian way, all right? It's not, it's not the most gorgeous um, way, so I just want you to keep that in mind. For our bread proofing bowl, this will do. And then I can sew in place a couple times, and I'm going to cut. Okay, the next thing I need to, you to keep in mind is... Um, as I really, uh, put this under there, kind of the quote, wrong way. All right. There is a wrong and a right way. Whoop! I dropped my, I dropped my spiral. There is a wrong and a right way to do this. You don't want your bowl to grow this, uh, to your right. You want it to grow to your left. So if I have it this way and I keep turning and, um, here we go. And I keep turning and adding and turning and adding. My bowl will grow out to the left. And that is what I want. If I turned it over and it grew out to the right, well, then the top of my machine, um, you know, up here would get in the way as I went to, uh, curve my bowl to make the sides. So, uh, ask me why I know that there's a wrong and a right <laughs> way to start sewing your bowl, okay? So that is why. So now I'm going to proceed to do the base. So once again, my zigzag is set at a width of 4.5 and a length of two. You may even, depending on yourself, you may even go a little wider, okay? So I'm gonna sew this a little bit. You know what? I think I'm going to go to a five. Yeah, why not? Okay, so I'm going to a five width. And you can see what I'm doing is I am zigzagging to join my pieces. And at the beginning here, you have to go kind of slow and you may want to adjust and rotate. Okay, and I'm going to move my camera. So excuse that motion. Oh, good camera angle. Man, you know, technology's just gotten really awesome. Sorry that that was shaky. All right, so this is going to let me show you something really important. As you go along and do this project, what you want to do is make sure that where your cord is coming together, where you're kind of butting that cord up, you want to line it up with that center mark on your foot. That's another reason that I chose this foot. Now, if you choose an open toe foot or something else like that, um, that's up to you, but what we want is we want some kind of center marking, and I like this foot because it gives us just all of this platform. An open toe foot, this side wouldn't be supported at all, but it is a little bit because the plastic extends forward. So where are my eyes as I am doing this project? Well, they are on that center marking of the foot. I have in tested and I've made sure that when the cord is butted up against itself and it's centered on the foot, that the zigzag is catching both sides. So I no longer need to be sort of concerned with my needle. And watching your needle is not a good policy while you are sewing. Okay. 
And the the beginning is, I, it's not like, I don't want to say the hardest, but it's the slowest going because you have the tightest curves here. Um, I didn't use a contrasting thread, and maybe I should have, but um, the reason that I didn't is because I want it to look nice. And like I said, this is a little more utilitarian. I'm not wrapping it with beautiful fabric or anything like that. Um, I am just creating this naked coil bowl. I think I may have accidentally chosen like a short piece of clothesline here. Yeah, so we'll get to uh, explore joining another piece of clothesline on. Which you may have to do if you've like opened up a package and you've made a bowl um, and you're going to go make another one and you're using, you know, the end of a package. You're not at the beginning. How much is clothesline at the hardware store, mom? Do you know? I don't know because Cause we, <laughs> yeah, we, uh, this clothesline that I'm using, yeah, this clothesline that I'm using right now is from Rope Bowl Mania Times. And that was, I would say, eight to ten years ago. So uh, we bought it a long time ago, but I do share a link. Like, you know, you can get some uh, online. You can get it uh, from... The sewing stores used to carry it more often when this was such a big trend. Okay, so I'm going. And you see when your curve gets slower, um, when it gets to be a larger arc it's easier to just keep it going with your fingers. And yeah, I, you know, I do have this machine on full speed. And I know that this is kind of a long process. I'm gonna time lapse this, you know, eventually, but I wanted you all to see kind of, you know, what it takes and how it grows, especially when we get to tilting. Um. So, I go back to that not using a contrasting thread. It just looks nicer. Because then you don't have to really worry. And I am using a Metrazine, a Mettler polyester thread. Someone might be like, well, that'll melt. Well, this doesn't go in the oven, okay? This is just the proofing bowl. It goes in the refrigerator, actually, a lot of the time. Depending on your sourdough instructions. I have posted. Oh, somebody says it's very satisfying to watch. Ah, enjoy. Oh, good, good, good. Okay, obviously this could, yeah, this is, um, this could be like a coaster. Okay, like I could be all done. Okay, you can make whatever you want out of this. I hope this isn't shaking the camera too bad, but I don't like sewing slow. Yeah, and see that five millimeter stitch width is giving me a little bit of grace as I go around. And I just like that because it lets me go fast. Hey, mom, can you hand me a tape measure? Or a ruler? No, you don't have to hold the camera. Okay, I'm just going to measure this just so you all can see where I'm at. Actually, I'm almost, uh, almost to where I want to be. I think I want to be around three and a half. Well... Yeah, I think it's almost ready. It's almost time for me to curve. However, I'm in a little bit of a special situation here. I have, I'm coming to the end of my rope. Oh. Marnie says, Christmas gifts in my future. Yeah, I mean, you can, uh, you can just do so much with this that like. It doesn't have to be to cook with. Right, oh yeah, oh yeah. And I'll show you a couple of other bowls that I've made. Okay, so look, I coming to the end here. Now, this is where the fabric wrapping practice, of course, would come in like super duper handy because you could get a seamless look where no one would, no one would even guess, okay, that the, the cord had been pieced together. So what I'm going to do is I butted that up against uh, the edge there and I'm going to kind of go as far as I can and keep those lined up. Okay, and then I want, okay, so what I want to do is I want to sew, whoop, like, perpen, sort of, and it's not perpendicular because that's a curve. Whoop. <laughs> really? Oh, Selena wants to know how would I finish the cord. I like to loop it back and make a little hanging loop. 
But what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to kind of butt those up and zigzag over them. It's like I'm darning them together. And I will come back to this, okay? So I just kind of zigzagged over them. When I say loop it back, I would cut it and do that and then just kind of like sew over several times, okay? Um, Janelle asks uh, what settings you use for the zigzag. Five millimeter width, two millimeter length. But of course, if it is different for you and your machine, you know, that's fine. Okay, I am ready to start turning this up. It could, it totally depends on your um, machine. But however, I want to talk about this a little bit. A lot of times people think that this foot, this double cording foot is a really good option for making these bowls because like, oh my gosh, look, it fits in there. Yay. However, after your um, cord, you know, gets stitched on, it then has these little threads going between the cords. And the back part of this cording foot doesn't like that. It starts to get caught on it. So the zigzag happens here, and then those horizontal stitches can get caught. So I have this with me in the broadcast today to show you another technique, but I am actually not using this to create my bowl. All right, so hey, I love presser feet, and I'm always willing to encourage people to buy a foot. But if you're going to make simple rope bowls without any of the embellishment that I'm going to show later, you actually don't need this. Oh, I hate to say it, but, you know, you need it for other fun things. So anyway, you don't need that double cording foot. Okay, time to tilt, and that is just what we do. We raise this up a little bit in order to create a curved side. And this is where things get fun. This is what takes some practice, everybody. Okay, uh, let me show you a little bit. I have like, whoa, lots of clothesline over there. I need to make sure that I keep it untangled. Um, I need to make sure that there's nothing sort of like pulling on my project or anything like that. N you know, no weight hanging off of it. And then I am cr I'm tilting this up as much as I can. Look, my machine, you know, it gets in the way a little bit, of course. And so... I'm tilting it as much as I can. And you'll see, so here I'm on like my first little round of tilting, but you're gonna see very soon that it starts to go upward um, rather quickly. Also over on the side of my, whoop, on the side of my machine, Excuse me, sorry for that. See, you've got this thread cutter here. Or you might have something else. Like, you might have all sorts of stuff back there, okay? Um, you just need to make sure that your, uh, that your little flat bottom there is not getting hung up. So always, you know, be looking at your project path and your thread path. Paula asked if I'm using a Microtex needle. I would say, um, and what I say in the blog post, which will uh, be finished once I get this video footage, wahoo, um, is a size 90. Microtex or denim needle. It really, the clothesline, it's a quarter inch thick. I mean, that is thicker than your average fabric, of course, but it's not super tightly like woven or anything like that. It's, it's not like a quarter inch of leather or something like that, or like you're sewing through, you know, eight layers of canvas. Really, the main key here to protecting your machine in these times where we may not have as ready access to our repair person is keeping the foot level. And so that has been when I started the bowl off and what I say, you know, in the blog post, whoop, I got off a little bit there, is to really not let your foot fall off of the support of the clothesline. That would be my my main piece of advice to you that can prevent things like needle breakage or anything else. Oh, do, 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 do. I'm making sure I'm not missing any questions. Man, mom, don't watch this video because my nails are a wreck. <laughs> okay, I do want to move the camera a little bit so you can see my other hand. Here, I think I think this will do it. So 
I am, I mean, it's not like turning a bowl on a wheel, but I am sort of turning the bottom and I'm cupping it. And I'm going, and I'm going almost at full speed here. So my right hand is feeding the cord and my left, oh yeah, I think that's really shown it nicely. And you can see that I have like, you know, some curvature there to the side of the, of the bowl. Oh, sorry if I cut out there, everybody. It was telling me my connection was bad. Okay, I'm getting some more clothesline. If I have missed anywhere, okay, you will be able to focus on this hopefully a little more unless you're doing a Facebook Live, which is super fun. So if you want to do that, go ahead. Um, <laughs> if I've missed anywhere, it's so simple. I'm just going to check for those misses. I'm just going to go back and I'm just going to zigzag over them because I'm using this coordinating thread and so it just doesn't even matter. Oh, I hope I'm not getting too blurry. There. Make the camera go up a little more. Okay. And here we go. Depending, I might need to make the decoration a separate live broadcast. Maybe I'll do that on Tuesday because I've been going here for about a half an hour. So, I mean, love you all, but. Okay, so I'm, I'm still cupping the bowl. I'm kind of paying attention to that. I don't wanna, you can't let up on the slant. Otherwise you'll start to flatten out again. Like you can, you know, go flatter again, which maybe you'd want to do. Um, there are some projects where there were like vases that had, you know, like tapered necks and then they, you know, flared out again. I mean, that, <laughs> take some take some skill and if you might want to practice like going up to this bowl by trying out like a few of those coaster sort of things or doing a smaller bowl chicken butt you can dye these so it's cotton clothesline so you could dye them I the thing that I saw a lot I don't know, maybe I saw it once, I don't know, is like an ombre dyed um, bowl where, you know, they either decreased the level of the dye or they moved the bowl in the container, however they did it. The bottom was darker and the top was a lighter, you know, color purple or green or whatever. I also knitted myself a trivet out of clothesline. I don't really know that I'd recommend it. All right, everybody. Look at that. So I've got, I've got a little more ways to go here. Let's see. I don't know. I mean. I guess no one has to, like, stay. So you see how that is just, you know, you're just butting it up there, okay? I went, went to check. Okay. Keep going. Oop, I've got, got a bunch of stuff over on my machine bed here that I don't need. Oh, and make sure to wind yourself a bobbin before this. <laughs> you just, you just. Now, I have made in the past... Uh, trivets using this technique and then I've like done designs on them sort of like in the air while I'm sewing too. I'm, lots of pretty things can happen. But once, oh do you see how dusty my foot is getting everybody? Like just, I cleaned off the foot before this because mom had been sewing on some flannel. Oh yeah, look at that. So this is just from like one bowl. Uh, not, it's not even a bowl, okay? It's a, it's a small tray at this point. Um, so, you know, 
And with any project, you need to be cleaning out your machine afterwards, but this is just a really whoop, good example. Yeah, so that might have been a little place I missed. Okay, if you want to ever, like, check out your progress or, you know, see how high your bowl is, and it's kind of hard to measure, just backstitch and cut. I'm using the automatic thread cutter on my machine, and take it off your machine and check it out. Okay, so, like, actually, that is just adorable. Okay, there's the place where I joined. I don't really care that it's, like, not gorgeous. Um, maybe I'll cover it with uh, decoration or something like that. Uh, maybe not. If you are making this for a loved one, maybe you start with, like, a new, um, you know, a new uh, sort of, you, you could just start with a whole new package of clothesline. Okay, so now I'm just going to go right back to where I was, and I'm going to backstitch a little bit. And just for this project, I just don't care. You know, I'm not trying to whoop, make it, you know, uh, it's not going to the state fair. I mean, that I know of. There are no state fairs right now. Um, okay, so I'm keep this at this point, it does get a little easier to cup the bowl. So I want to show you this this progress here. So look, I've got more space. I've got more, you know, room to maneuver a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna set the camera down again. All right. Oh, might be another little place that I missed. Like I said, it's a lot easier when you're not filming and doing this live, but hey. Oh, I got my little stray thread there. I just don't want it to get oop, hung up. Oh, you see all you see that dust in there? This is a lot of stitching in a row. You know, like most seams that you sew are not this long. Uh, and if it's on a quilt and it's a long seam, it's a straight stitch and it's not on this like linty rope. So that's, you know, why there's all the dust buildup. Um, I believe my bowl was about six or seven inches high. Okay, I am also doing a round bowl, right? Like a circle. You can do a more oblong or rectangular bowl, but you just need to start differently. You know, oh, my hand is kind of, you're just like seeing my hand. Mm, can I make it focus on the presser foot? Will it last? I'm trying to make this focus more on the work than on my hand, but it thinks my hand is like a little person. Okay. That's better. And honestly, I mean, if I was going to tell you what I'm most impressed with myself about this is, uh, <laughs> is how my, actually my left hand is working. It's, it's sort of just guiding the bowl through because of course the machine is feeding here but it's got to be guided i did explore crocheting rope together okay in order to make these baskets because like that's a you know a thing and this is so much faster and i don't crochet very quickly um I thought I'd want to do it. I thought it sounded fun. I really did. But I don't. You could also make yourself like some kind of modular thing. Like if you wanted to make a box uh, that didn't have, that you know, didn't have curved upsides, that it had straight sides. You can make several squares and then you could stitch them together. You can go crazy. You can knit with this stuff. Like I said, I knitted a trivet. That's going to be alive about like when you're 
physically distancing and you think it'd be a good idea to try out a project, a funny, weird project, and then you do something funny and weird like knitting a trivet out of clothesline, it's, I don't regret it. I've been using it, but it was a weird project and it hurt my hands a lot. Okay, so once again, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna just backstitch. Raise my presser foot. Oh, check that out. That's a bowl, looking like a bowl. Okay, it's not quite as tall as I need it to be yet. So I just backstitched, I went forward and back to get started again. <laughs> Kim says, you're making it look easy. Oh, thank you, Kim. It, uh, it did take me a couple a couple of tries to get back in the in the groove but I did use to back in this in rope bowl mania heyday clothesline bowl mania I made I think I made a decent amount not as much as some other people we would have some customers you know especially women who like they retired or they were recently retired and they were like you know, they were just up for trying and learning new skills and they would come and show us the coolest things and they were, you know, they would teach for us and stuff like that. And this one woman, she just, she made the urns with the lids and, the, and she made, then she embroidered freestanding lace flowers to go on them. And of course, the woman who inspired me to make these was a professional chef. So... Elizabeth says, does it shape itself into a bowl if you keep adding rings? That's what I'm doing right now. So um, I'm sorry that I can't have, like, two camera angles, really. Like, if I, you know, if, come on, Facebook Live, get it together. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that is how this is going. So I, I showed this at the beginning of the video. I made my flat, you know, platform for the bowl. And then I started tilting and tilting. Um, and I kept going. This might be a spot where I maybe, well, I don't know if I really missed. It's just not super tight right there. Uh, but I'm going to show you how you can go back and repair things like that. So you just keep tilting and tilting and tilting and tilting and tilting and sewing and sewing and sewing. And you are going to get a bowl. Uh, I have washed and dried my bread proofing bowl, I think two to three times at this moment at the time of this filming and it is awesome and it's holding its shape and it's wonderful and I mean I just think it's going to be a very long lasting implement that I use uh you know it just there's there's nothing wrong with it I also got to take some video of me getting the dough out of the proofing bowl and uh, really showing that it does, it can stick a little bit, but then showing you the bread after it's baked and showing you that it doesn't really matter, that you still get the cool lines and you still get the cool decoration. So I'm starting to get, I'm the, the bowl's getting big here. Unwieldy even, one might say. Martha asks, what foot are you using? Martha, I discussed feet a little bit. This is the all-purpose foot. And I, like I said, I do have a blog post written up about this. I'm going to talk about the double cording foot uh, a little bit more later. But I spoke a little bit earlier about how it's not actually the best option for this. And uh, for just constructing these bowls the way this works because... The zigzag stitch can get caught on that groove that's underneath the foot, okay? So, keep it going here. Oh, 
Oh, I'm running out of bobbin thread. Oh my God. <laughs> so I heard a sound and I stopped. Did everybody see that? And look, I'm getting, I'm getting near the end. So I think it had like an extra spin on it or something like that. Uh, you know, well, I just, it was just, yeah, on the, okay. Well, this is like bright white. Now it's, okay, l l hello. Now it's time for a bobbin winding lesson on the Destiny. So, is this the color I'm using? No, I'm yeah. using a totally different color. Okay, so. Okay, everybody, I told you to wind a bobbin, but really. That was a brand new bobbin. Yeah, it was, I just wound, or er, mom just wound it. No. No. Okay. Okay. Mom just wound it. So I am going to show you winding a bobbin. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter. I already cut the thread. <laughs> All right. Bobbin winding on the destiny. Here, mom, come hold the camera. Now you get to be camera person. Okay. So I actually have my thread and a thread lift behind the machine. Ooh, we're a little dirty. Look, at, I was going to say, yeah. they're seeing all the trash yeah. I'm making over there. I'm okay. making a lot of trash. So I'm cutting. So, following the uh, bobbin winding thread path there, okay? And then this is what I do to wind my bobbin. I thread up through the bobbin there. Come here. And watch the screen. Can you get the screen in there, too? When I do this, a screen comes up on my machine. And I want you to pay attention to this. So, you press the start button. And really, the bobbin winder should uh, be in the middle speed there. And I wound my bobbin a little bit, and I'm going to trim right here, okay? But I want you all to check this. What people do is they press the start button, and then they want to stop bobbin winding for some reason, and they move their finger down here, and it disappears. Oh, my gosh. Where'd it go? Okay, it's up and the here. Bobbin is no, still it's up winding. here. No, show them the screen. Oh, show okay. them where I'm going. Okay. It's right there. So yeah. come down here. So look, the start button becomes the stop button. So I'd have all these people, maybe they only wanted to wind right. a little thread or something, and they'd move their finger down and they'd be like, oh my God, where'd it and go? And then it's still ah. winding. No, but okay. Yeah. No, over okay. here, over here, go over here. There. See, there's, it appears, okay? It's the home button. Yeah. You push, okay, it becomes the bobbin button. All right, it's all done. It snapped over. Up here, there is a thread cutter right there. Ta-da. And now I shall rethread the machine. How long have I been live? Like for a million years. Forever. Wendy says this is like watching the fireplace channel. I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. All right. So wine two bobbins. I'm adding that to my blog post because I, I don't know why this one's taking. Um, oh gosh, I'm not. I'm not even putting my bobbin cover on correctly. Um, I don't know why this one is like you know, taking a little bit more than before, or if it's, who knows, or maybe I did change bobbins and I don't remember. All right. And then a little demo of the destiny of the baby lock. Never miss needle threader. Watch it, miss. Watch it. Nope. Didn't miss. Okay. Do you see this? Do you see this dust here? This is from this clothesline bowl. And there was just a discussion in the group about how we, <laughs> recommend that when you unthread your machine you cut right here and then you pull the thread out so that you're not pulling the thread back up through this area of your machine right above the needle bar is dusty okay so if you pull your thread back through it's not really just about the thread it's about anything else that might come with it denise lafleur says i'm getting dizzy sorry unplanned bobbin emptying event back to our regularly scheduled programming but maybe you're just getting dizzy because i'm making such an awesome round bowl all right i really don't have that much more to go i think But I also think that was good for you to hear that like when the bobbin was getting emptier and emptier, it made a funny little sound. Okay, so you listen to your machine too.
And... I really might be almost good here. Actually, the bowl I made is, it's not like too big, but, and, and you don't want it to be too small because you don't want to pour your, your sourdough, um, you know, dough in there and then have it come out like the top. And sourdough dough is very liquid. It's, you know, it's not the, it's not quite as springy as your, you know, tr uh, your yeasted, you know, like the the bread that I make for sandwich bread or something like that. Different. Okay. Hmm. Oh, and I have yet to try this on regular bread. I don't. I don't really know if that's a if that's an option. This bowl, I think I'm gonna do a spiral on it. Uh, and one reason is for modeling good safe behavior with your sewing machine, which I'll talk about in a minute. Man, you guys are getting an hour long live. I don't know if you want that or like that or whatever, but that's what's happening. <laughs> yeah, you can always leave. <laughs> Please don't. Please don't feel, please don't feel compelled to stay if you don't want to. I'm gonna use this footage in my tutorial, so. All right, get into the, you guys may be wondering what the heck is going on. Oh my gosh, this one looks good. I'm doing a good job on this one. Okay, so practice makes perfect. Okay, oh, Selena measured her waist thread. And Selena, I may not, oh yeah. Uh, she snipped, like, she snipped and pulled through, you know, when we tell you to snip and pull through instead of unthreading backwards through the machine. She said it was 20 inches of thread. And she says she doesn't feel like that's a whole lot of thread to, quote, waste. I, I believe I'd agree with you, Selena. Someone did say that what they do is they, like, unthread in the direction of threading, which I thought if you're worried about thread waste, that's your best bet. I think that might be the most logical solution. Now I want to talk to you when you get up here and you're less encumbered by this part of the bowl, you could start to really like straighten this up more or whatever. And I think my bowl actually flared a little bit up there. My, my other one that I did, but yeah, it's looking really nice. I think I'm really almost to the height I want. I don't want to shortchange myself. And my left hand has kind of changed position. It's sort of on the edge of the bowl instead of where I was. I was kind of cradling the bottom before. I don't know if Rebecca Darling is watching this, but she's a group member and she actually sews fur. Um, like she does, she makes fur and leather goods. And I wonder if she has like some machine, some special like industrial sort of machine that would make this easier that has like a big free arm or something. She has like an actual walking foot machine and like stuff you use to make shoes and things like that. So anyway. It is something that crosses my mind. All right, we're getting to the end of the bowl, everybody. You know, now that I'm going along, and I'm sewing at full speed, I've got, like, pedal to the metal, everybody. And I'm like, I think this, I could handle this going faster. <laughs> now that I'm not having to turn so quickly, this is truly, up here, a straight shot. You're not, you're not really curving because of the way the bowl is now. And if you're joining us and you're like, what the heck is going on? Just enjoy yourself and then go back and watch the video from the beginning because I explain a lot of things. And if you're like, what is this lady talking about with sourdough? I am making a bread proofing bowl. Okay, so I'm going to finish this off. I think it's tall enough. Uh, I think it's going to give me some room to do a little bit of decoration in there. And now I'm going to cut some off to make like a little loop. And you don't have to do this. You could cut it off and sort of do what I'm going to do with the loop. 
Uh, instead, you just, just stitch the bejesus over it. You could use a little bit of fabric. Um, if you wanted to make this look nicer, you could enclose this in some fabric. But look at that. I just opened that up. I'm just inserting it right there flattening it out and I'm just going like this is what I do everybody to darn my jeans and we've got we've got a video about that so um I just zigzag 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 and this is, I'm trying not to get my hand in the way too much so I'm going on one side of that inserted tail and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to go on the other side and kind of but the other. I can't remember who asked about this, who asked about finishing it. This is the way I'm choosing to finish this bowl. There is no right or wrong answer here. Okay, gonna stitch in place a couple times. Okay, and boom, boom. Okay, I have, yeah, this is a good size bowl. All right, look at that. So, this bowl is a fine size, and what I did, like the whole reason I'm doing this, is I decorated, actually. Oh, you can see it. Do you see the inside um, there? My base is a slightly different color than the rest of the bowl, and it was a different batch of clothesline, so that's kind of fun. Uh, you know, and you could dye clothesline ahead of time, or if you have leftover colored clothesline or whatever, that's kind of, that's kind of neat looking. So I like that. Uh, anyway, now what I did with my other bowl is it has loops of clothesline. All right. And so what that meant for my sewing of the clothesline, when you have a loop of this stuff, can I find the end of my clothesline? I mean, maybe not. I was just using it because I was just sewing with it. But there, there you are. I think this is the other loop. Okay, when you do, when you do like circles, okay. So what what mine looked like was it was like this, and there were four loops, and it, it has turned out really fun, pretty, and everything, and lovely. But what happens here is this is one, two three layers of clothesline. Tell you what, let's just not chance it with us not being able to get to our sewing machine repair places all the time. Let's just, if you, if you are going to decorate the inside of your bowl, just do something where you're applying one layer of clothesline. And so I think what I want to try and do here is a bit of a spiral. Um, and I'll see uh, if I can film that. But this is where I want to talk to you about. Now, we are going to use our double cording foot. Okay, so it's a jumbo double cording foot. This could be used when you are actually sewing with two cords. Or it can be used with one cord. And you could decide which side of the cord you would like it to be on. I believe that I'll probably be going on the left. That's what I did last time. Um, and so how I'm going to sew this on is just with a straight stitch, okay? I'm going to make it a little longer than normal. Uh, so I'm going to choose a straight stitch oriented to the left. I'm going to increase the length to about 3.5, okay? But the reason that this doesn't work so hot when we are zigzagging, okay, is because those zigzag stitches will start to get caught on that groove that is behind the needle, behind where the zigzag gets made. So you see that groove's gonna get in your way. So this actually isn't a great, I, a great option for constructing these bowls. I've tried it and my zigzag stitch gets caught. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to just use it for the couching sort of application. Speaking of couching, I believe that is the subject of today's Sewing Out Loud podcast that should be popping up in your not podcast. Potato couching. Not potato not couch potatoing. Right. Okay. Let's see if I can Oh man, perfect. Oh gosh. Y'all are lucky to know me. I'm just kidding. I mean you know, I like to make jokes like that. Alright, we'll see if I can film this by myself or if I have to have 
Zadie come over. All right, so here's the deal about this clothesline bowl. Just, um, you can get in here, okay? I, and, and you can like fold it back. So check this out. Like I can, you know, fold this back if I need to or something like that. So, uh, I, the, the design I did before was fairly intricate and I just showed it who's boss. Okay. But right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this spiral and I'm not going to bring it into the center here, like into, um, the base because I like the spiral that I get from the flower, uh, just when I am, um, like when I put the bread in there, like if this was a, an unadorned bread proofing bowl. So I just like that, but I am going to do a little thicker. I'm just going to accent sort of the spiral that I'm getting. So once again, uh, I have my machine on a straight stitch oriented to the left. My cording is in the left groove of that big double cording foot and my stitch length. Okay. I thought I put it to 3.5 and then it was down to three, but who knows? Okay. And then I'm going to go. And what this is doing is it is just guiding my cord. Okay. And I'm sort of freehanding this. You could draw like with a graphite pencil. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going a couple of coils away from the center right now. And when I get back around, you'll see that I'm just going to kind of space away. Okay, so I'm just going to show you. The bowl is like this, and I'm around here with the camera and you, like kind of on where you guys are. Okay. I'm going to readjust the camera a little bit. And I'm just sewing. I'm going slow. My machine can handle this. So what I'm sewing through right now is two layers of clothesline. And now if I'm going to show you how this bakes up, it's going to take me like three days. <laughs> this has been like the longest sewing blog post uh, process because I have to wait so long to actually test it out. Got to feed your starter. But if my other one worked and it, I mean, honestly, it might even be like uh, more intricate than, uh, than I'd ever really recommend. But hey, YOLO, right? So just make sure to get your get your cord to a place where it's free. Okay, and you're seeing see this is my previous cord, so you can see how much that's sticking out. So that can like that can make an impression on the bread as it's proofing and be fun. If oh, I'm getting a little far away from it. I'm kind of. But hey, it's artisan bread, right? It's not supposed to be absolutely perfect. But let's say I was gonna like make these bowls and like sell them to somebody or something. I'd probably draw my design on there. The design that you get rustic. when you, yeah, rustic, patina, whatever. The design that you get is a faint sort of memory. Now, you can actually, you can see the circles on my other one pretty well. I'm surprised. I was like, whoa. I could recreate. I could be like, oh, the inside of the bread bowl looked like this, you know. I did make some more sourdough. Like, I got it out of the oven yesterday. And I forgot to slash it because my children were yelling at me. So I, it had no slashes. And it did like the top of part of my bread. Like the dome has a lot of uh, 
larger holes in it where I think if the steam had been able to escape, it would have been okay. Okay, I'm coming to the end. I'm gonna, well, I don't know, whatever. What am I, what am I doing? Yeah, I'm coming to the end here, I think. Maybe I'll just sort of finish this off with like a parallel to the rest of the bowl. Like that could be a pretty, a pretty way to finish this off. So it's like a, sort of like a lip or a ridge on the, on the bowl, following the final coil. Aren't you, this is, this is how these decisions are made, okay? Alright, and since I'm coming around, oh look, this is all like kind of ending up right here. I don't know if I would have necessarily planned it that way. It's it's ending up with my uh, loop. I don't know, maybe it's a good thing. It's all in the same place. Okay, so I'm going to come here and I'm just going to sew my straight stitch. Okay, so it's in place. I'm backing up a little bit. And I'll show you kind of fun. Look at the inside of that bowl. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. You see this? Hey, Allison. Um, you see these little frayed edges here? Okay. We don't, we didn't want those. So off with the double cording foot again on with the all purpose foot. Okay. So I just want to make it clear, man, I'm really getting that browser foot on there really well. You would think I know how to sew or something. Um, once again, if your machine is not up to sewing through a lot of layers, don't do this decorative part. I hate to, I hate to say that. It's you know, it's not the most fun recommendation. But um, I don't want to see your machine in the store. You know, at, in the repair shop or unusable and unable to go to the repair shop during this time of physical distancing. So once again, I'm just kind of darning over that join. I am, I do not really care. Okay. I'm covering up that frayed edge. So in place a couple times. My machine has a button to do that. All right, and then I need to do, okay, so that's that's what it looks like. I don't really mind that. And like zooming in on it may not look, you know, super beautiful, but it does not look half bad. Uh, and then I'm going to go back do, 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 to the inside of the bowl here. This might be a little hard to see. I'm going to sew over it. And then... I am actually sewing without guiding the bowl, which, oh, here we go. I'll just show it who's boss, everybody. It's a flexible piece of art here. So once again, I'm just darning sort of, this is, if you've seen our darning videos, we kind of just, we call it sort of reweaving the fabric with our zigzag stitch. And so that's what I'm doing, just covering up that, you know, frayed edge of the clothesline. And since I used a thread that coordinates, okay, so like, see how my spiral got like a little off there? If I'd drawn it on, it would have been more precise. But for our purposes, for just creating this sort of, you know, fun, uh, pattern that will sort of show up on your bread. I think it, it works really nicely. Jen says, this seems like a good use for a vintage machine. Okay, so it needs to be a machine that has a zigzag, so keep that in mind. And then, careful, some of those vintage machines don't like the big thicknesses all the time. So just make sure, you know, it's okay with that. Um, and then talking about, here, I'm going to just pop this under the presser foot, maybe, to hold it. Okay, talking about the presser feet. The reason these two feet came up in our discussion, okay, is this all-purpose foot, it stays level, okay, as you are making the bowl. And then once again, this um, double cording foot, it stays level as you're decorating because it has that channel. This foot 
you might have a little more trouble. I mean, it's doing okay uh, as I have it sort of on just that one layer of cording. Of course, it's nice when it's, it's perfectly level on the two layers. But when it's like this, I can see that's getting a little unstable for people, okay? So I really would recommend that double cording foot if you are going to be doing the decoration. If you are just going to be making some fun uh, basic bowls without that double layer of decoration on them, then you can just use your all-purpose foot. And then here are the bowls that I talked about during my Sewing Fails um, broadcast. I, it, it's a fine bowl. It just wasn't what I wanted. And then I talked to you all about how you can make a different shape uh, some of the bread proofing bowls are more oblong, you know, than round. So, you, you know, if you want to make an oblong bowl, at the beginning of this video, I showed you putting together a spiral, okay, like a round spiral. And then with this one, you can see that I put together a few rolls to obviously start more of a rectangular shape. And this one, actually, I probably should have just kept going with it. I, I think maybe I was being a little too hard on myself. Or maybe I just started it tad too wide. Uh, and that's why uh, the, the measurement here, I do think it's helpful to have that. Uh, so I, I do link you to like the recipe for the sourdough I use. So you, you will probably be working with like the same volume of dough. And having that 3.5 to 4 inch base is good. Um, I'd maybe air toward the 3.5. And then just going up, up, up as much as you can and making it. Oh, let's see how tall it is. I never really measured it. I never really measured it. Let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's about like almost almost six inches-ish, five, five and a half. Yeah, that should be fine. Like I said, my other one was, it is plenty tall. It's not too tall, but it is It is plenty tall uh, to, to do the job. You want it to be tall enough. Uh, if you do have to put this in, my sourdough um, recipe calls for you to do the final proofing in the refrigerator in this, okay? I put it on a plate or a cutting board, okay? I don't, it, like, when it gets full of wet, dough it can get a little you know it's not uh it's not like ceramic or wood or anything like that so I do put the base onto a cutting board or something and I flour the bejesus out of this bowl okay uh and like I said I can't wait to share the footage I got some footage my husband um I was like show them how much this was sticking <laughs> so when you put the dough in there and then you flip it over to get it out you know it sticks a little, it doesn't really stick to this part. It doesn't, if you just make a normal one with no decorations, you'll probably have no problem. But it's stuck to my decorations a little bit. However, it still made a really beautiful imprint um, and impression on the bread loaf. So I was very like surprised, uh, delighted, encouraged by that because for a second I was a little upset. Okay, you got to see kind of. Um, an area of the sewing room with a bunch of stuff in it. All right, so I guess I need to go uh, make some bread, and I think maybe it's kind of late, but I think that I could get it going, get it proofing tonight, and then I could bake it tomorrow and show you, and I can get my blog post all done. So anyway, uh, it was so very lovely to be live with you all again today. Uh, it was... It was a long one, everyone. If you enjoy these lives, go to sewhere.com slash membership. <laughs> if you want some more hour-long bread bowl things, uh, anyway, uh, you can go to sewhere.com slash membership, and then I'll be live for you next Tuesday and Friday. And uh, hopefully you all are getting some rest and you're having a good time. Uh, and you're all staying healthy and well. And if this bread bowl, like, please, I just would like to give this disclaimer nowadays. I hope that I can inspire you and delight you. No pressure. This video will be here. Maybe you're not really feeling it today. I kind of wasn't feeling it today a lot either. Um, I was noticing that I was feeling very tired. And that's often a stress response for me. And this time is stressful. Even, you know, if you are safe and healthy at home, it, it can be stressful. And if you're facing other challenges, it can be stressful. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope it's a, I hope on, um, mainly 
that this is a good time for all of you. And then let me know if you have any other live suggestions. You can let me know. Maybe it's going to tie in with something. But I do have uh, from the Confident Stitch, I got my fabric yesterday. I got my Burnside Bibs pattern. I'm. Uh, we have like a Gigantor garden now. Um, my husband is a school teacher, so he is at home and he's creating virtual lessons. But also, we got to put the garden in a little earlier than normal this year. Normally that's kind of relegated to spring break. And so anyway, um, and we have new chickens. So I'm, what I'm saying is I need some overalls because it's some beautiful linen overalls to be a farmer in to let some chickens poop on me. Okay. All right. Uh, so I'll see you next week. Enjoy sewing out loud today. Uh, it is a fun episode about couching and so long and so happy.